people showing coming up to Well, that, yeah, it's, I think that right. Is it made out of concrete, Cousin Charity? Yeah. We don't want to talk about them. We don't want to take our business. Ooh, we live. Cousin Charlie. Hey, can you see my Ronnie Martin sticker? I ought to put it right here on my forehead. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Right here. Put it right here. Can you see that? I see it. Right here. All right, it's Wednesday. It's 1 o'clock. That means it's time for Real Estate 101 with me, GTT, and AKA the Weatherman. Who makes the show, folks? You know what? We can't do this show without you. Did I say that out loud? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. But hey, uh, we appreciate you joining. We would have loved it if people like you, Cousin Charlie, there's. There's ways you can help us. You can refer us business, Jason Connor. You can buy or sell through us. Or you could simply like, comment, or share out this stream. We want to be hands down the number one person for digital real estate content in the great state of Tennessee. Not just Murfreesboro. We're going bigger. We're Nation. going huge. Nation. Huge. We're going huge. Right, Cousin Charlie? Catholic. Ooh, I see them shares. Where's Lucky? Lucky ain't here on Wednesdays. Jason Kana, Jason Kana. So today, weatherman, who do you want to give a special? Is there any person that you would love to say, "I love you"? Hates you a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we do want to give a shout out to our good friend and one of the smartest guys we know, Scott Abernathy with PMI. Mm. Hey, he's expanding. He's doing great things over there. So if you're looking for anybody that needs Property management, they are your go-to. There's a reason he is known as probably the best in the area. I dare you to give him a, try, a try. Dare. Dare you. Now, is there any agents out there you would really, 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 really love to thank? There he is. There. Come, come back in here. Come back, well, hey, Jimmy. Well, we come do, back. but we want to be very careful that we don't. So there's a lot of agents uh, we like to thank, so we got to be very strategic. Did, were we warned not to do that? No, but Did the I, FBI I already, profile get after us? I would again? rather not. Okay, all right. Chair Chris Clark, thank you for sharing. Jeffrey Baker, I see you've joined. I'm waiting on you to share. If you share this stream, oh, if you Ginger Stead said good afternoon. Ginger, hey Ginger, we'll have to get you. her over here one day. We do need to get her over here. Who was I? What was I saying before you interrupted? Did we thank the exchange boutique? Oh, our, 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 our tire, our clothing attire. <laughs> this shirt was brought to you by the Exchange Boutique. Brittany Renee. I thought it looked like a girl shirt. This is a girl. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something funny before we get started. Brit, I, when we went out to Vegas a couple years ago, me, Dutton, Bird, and Scott and Aggie went out there. The highlight of my trip was going to the Mandalay Spa. And they've got these big, fancy robes. And I looked. Dutton bought one down there. He he found hey, one Dutton. Was it kind of like this? <laughs> With his gold like. chain. <laughs> Somehow Dutton, the he is extra. Hey, look at that guy right there. Let's give a shout out. There to you. Him. Hey, Jimmy Dibble. Jimmy Dibble. So, um, <laughs> hey, hey, we can hear you. So, uh, so anyway, the highlight of my trip was going out to that spot, and I got this robe, and this robe was so comfortable. Nice. It was very nice. So we went back out there a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, and uh, we went to the spa, put on that robe, gotcha. and I told Brittany Renee, I want one of those robes. So what did the robe cost? Well, the robe was very, it's 50 bucks, but I mean, the brand new ones are like three. These are used robes, but uh, they were probably $50. So she orders me a robe, and she was excited for it to get here. She was very excited. The same kind of robe? The same kind of robe it came in. I just stole one. It came, well, you can't because oh. they check you out, man. They'll, they'll get you, you can't steal in a, in a casino. Really? So, uh, no, 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 no. So, uh, she ordered me one and it came and I tried it on and it was like tight. She got me a medium. She did that on So, guess who's days. wearing it now? Hey, that was on Guess purpose. who's wearing it every night? Nicholas. No. no. Really? Brittany It's Brittany Renee. So, <laughs> so last no night, Last he night, ordered you a medium. <laughs> <laughs> so last night I came walking in. She didn't know it. I came walking in the house. I had it on, looking all fat. You know, everything looked good except my gut was sticking. Hey, you got it tied up. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, thank you for the the robe, Brittany Renee. I love you. Hey, and I did get engaged. I don't know if everybody knows. I don't know if she's posted enough pictures, but I did get engaged. So congrats to me. So let's get started. Let's, let's get started. set. Hello, the, Taylor Day. Taylor, Taylor Day, Day what's Chris shaking? Carr. David, Steve, David, David Steve. Chris, Will, Bobby, Brian, Nancy, Ralph. Thank you, everybody, for getting on him. Share our streams. Share the love. Share the love. Here is the, this is our point of view before I get started. You know how on TV you got to say the opinions of us. It's not the opinions of John Jones Real Estate. It's just me, my independent thoughts, and Weatherman and his independent thoughts. So, so you know exactly and what. And Cousin Charlie. And Cousin Charlie. Kathleen, so here's what I want you to understand before we dig into this. The example listed is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house or lower. Yes. And we're talking about so many people now are doing coming soon listings, and they'll call. Hey, can I get in there? Please let me get. Let in me there. get in there. Let me. Let me get in there, Charlie. Can I get in there, Ch cousin Charlie? Hey, it's amazing how many friends you have in real estate when you got to come and see. And I love it when you go above and beyond and make arrangements to get them in, and then they don't even call you back. Mm. They don't even say thank you. But hey, we don't care. That's part. Of, that's part of the deal we're in. That's just part of the game. So what I'm going to talk to you today is if you're an individual out there and you're going to buy a house, and you are certain, without doubt, this is the house that you want. No matter who you're working with, this right. is just for the consumer, this, our opinions only. Our opinions only. If you've made your mind, I want this house, okay? A lot of people close to you are going to say, negotiate. Negotiate. Get, get it cheaper. Get it cheaper. You know they mark them up. You might be able to save 800 bucks. Get it up and go, come in a little bit this lower. Ain't sadder. So here's what you need to understand. <laughs> Whenever you get in there before... The market can buy it. You've got a leg up. You've got an opportunity to shut this deal down. Yep. And I'm gonna. I've got a list of seven things. I could probably come up with a few more. These are gonna make some people uncomfortable. They're probably gonna make your agent a little uncomfortable. But I'm just gonna tell you what I believe it's gonna take for us to take a deal if we're listing right. it. I do have to give a disclaimer before we start this. Go ahead with me. Thank you. If we talk about prices, we it's just our opinion of what we think. We're not telling the consumer what they ought to. It's just our opinion. So we got to make sure that we're not telling well, people Well, man, you are always keeping do. me out of real estate prison. I sure do appreciate that. So, hey, number one thing you need to stack in your deal. Number one, I believe you better be using a local lender. Yes. You uh, better, with some clout. You better be using a lender that has a reputation of getting things done, Cousin Charlie. If you bring me a deal and I look at it and you got that, you don't tell me we're pre approved, we're quick, and you don't tell me. Usually agents don't brag about that. They sneak it in on the very last page of about 415 pages, or maybe they'll put it in like page 414 out of 430, hoping you don't see that. You'll, Samantha Ballard's on here. You'll can future can. Hey, hey, that's right. She knows what we're talking about. Yeah. She had to go through this process. So when you've got an opportunity to see a house before the market, you you are in a position, you're in pole position. It's your yeah. house to win. You can only lose it. So with man, if you've got somebody and they're looking at a house and they don't have a lender that has name recognition, what happens? They're out. Under, the, under that price point. Well, and not only if it's if you don't have a local lender, make sure they answer the phone because that other agent is more than likely going to call them mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if we needed to articulate this so buyers would understand, whenever we're, whenever we're selling your offer to a listing agent and they ask, who's doing this loan? And we say, such and such. And they're like, I mean, I've never heard of them. The certainty of the closing has already started ticking away. Have you noticed that, Cousin Charlie? How does that make you feel? Gives you that bad feeling. It does give you, it, it, does. Gives, it gives you a little bit of doubt. It does. It you think they're good. already taking you a little less serious. Oh, this guy, we got a great lender, he's out of Illinois, but he's good. And I he's used to say good. it, but sometimes we get in and say, I got a great lender out of Brentwood, but guess what? We're not selling in Brentwood, and we don't use nothing against Brentwood lenders. If we was in Brentwood, they have the same clout in Brentwood. So if if they're not known here, 
that doesn't do us a lot of good to listing agents that have never heard of John Smith out of Brentwood. No matter how good he is, they just not heard of him. Even though we're two or a city apart, that still has uh, could affect your offer. That's exactly right. This listing agent, if he is not familiar with the lender, and you say who it is, his certainty in this file closing, the probability starts to drop. Yeah. He don't know. He don't feel good about it. He's got to take to his seller and say, I'm 100% certain we're going to be able to get this deal. Number two, before the home is listed, you've made your mind up. Make sure we keep saying that, Kathleen, the machine. Uh-oh, Brittany Renee's on here trying to get her credit. Get Coming her in credit. 10 minutes late. Uh, make sure we're saying this over and over and over again. This is the house you want. You're certain this is the one you want, okay? Number two, don't come in negotiating the price. If it's two forty nine nine, you're going to be lucky, or two hundred and under, yeah. you're going to be lucky to get the house at list price. Lucky. Do you, do you know why, cousin Charlie? Yes. Why? Because they can take it to the market, and they're going to get more than list price. Mm. God, he's smart. Cousin Charlie, why do you think the market would run the price up? It's a supply and demand. How many people were looking in the 200 or below price range? Cousin Charlie had an offer. I don't know how many days it took us to get the response back, but it was a $209,000 house. Somewhere in that ballpark. 209. 209. He made an offer. Two days later, maybe three days later, we got a response. There's roughly, was it 20, 22, 22 offers. And what did you offer? It's 209. You went up. No, it was two hundred. It was two hundred. We went up to two hundred nine. You went nine thousand dollars above list price. No inspection. He, no inspection. No inspection. Still didn't get it. Now if he could, paying a little bit over appraisal mm -hmm. if it didn't appraise. Yep. We're we're paying three grand over appraisal. If you could have gotten in before the market, you maybe have had a chance at that. You just depend on the seller situation. Just, it would depend on them. But you have no room to negotiate whatsoever on price terms if it's $200,000 or under. Right. I believe if you know this is the house you want and you are 100% aware of its price accordingly to the market, I would tell you to waive the appraisal. What do you think about that? I think if you got some money in your back pocket to do it, absolutely. Now, you've got to have enough trust in your agent that can tell you, I know for certain that this house is worth this much money. Right. So an appraisal, like if the, if a home is listed at $200,000, you offer $215,000, and you try to outbid everybody else, but you have a contingency of an appraisal in there, your offer is not as good as somebody's with a $205,000 offer. With no appraisal. It's, I wouldn't even take the 215 with appraisal. Because what they're trying to do is tie your place up, then renegotiate it. Yeah, they'll now, say they're a week before close and they're going to drop it to the appraised value. Yeah. And most time they do. It's just a strategy. So, would you buy a house without a, an appraisal contingency, Cousin Charlie? Yes. You would? Yeah. If it's the house I wanted. Would you, Kathleen? Yeah, why not? Or what? Because the biggest uh, the biggest fears buyers have is overpaying for something. Phil Griffin, what's shaking, my man? How can you overpay for something you really want? I'd rather have it inspected. If it's the house I really want and I'm all in on this house, mm -hmm. the, the appraisal, it's a question mark. Well, what if? Hey, if I'm all in on it, I, I'm putting everything, you know, I'm putting it all in and this is the house I want. Yeah. I don't want to have to go look for another one. Right. And Just so like I'd that no medium robe you got. There wasn't a price on that because you wanted one. I did. You'd overpay for that. We well, overpay for just about everything. About everything we do, we overpay for it. Don't we? Well, we don't overpay for you, Kathleen. You're probably, we couldn't overpay for you. How good were those Julia's cookies? I didn't eat one. I didn't eat a cookie. We will. Not me. Uh, not me. That room is like... Jeremiah, thank you for getting on here, my man. Number, uh, number. Hey, that's right, Carrie. It's here. You need warm referrals to qualify appraisers. We 
We can connect you. Number four, Kathleen, if this is the house you really, really want, and I know it's going to have multiple offers on it the way yours can outshine everybody else, no inspection. Mm. No inspection. Because the market can probably dictate an offer with more money, better loan, and probably no inspection. So here, so here's my theory on that in this market. So unless you got a house that's 50 or 60 years old that has old plumbing and old wiring, then that's you definitely for a safety issue. If you have a house within 20 years old, the way I present it to most of my buyers are, the home warranty costs just as much as an inspection does. It's better for you to spend your money there to cover your main appliances. All of your outside stuff, unless it's had a claim on your roof that they kept the money, you're going to find out anyway with a clue report, you're covered by your outside insurance. Now, if you have a major plumbing leak or a major electrical issue down the road and something catches on fire, that's what insurance is for. So, not trying to talk you out of no inspection, but there's other ways to look at it if you really want the house. Most people are worried about the main components, foundation, roof, AC, want to make sure there's no leaks. Yeah. But we always do a little pre-inspection as we're showing the house and look under cabinets to see if there's any of those kind of issues. And I would, I would much rather at this point pay for my own home warranty than buy an inspection so I don't lose that on the house. Chad Williams, I see you on here, Mr. 4%. What's up? We had a question from the audience, Kathleen. Would a lender allow no inspection? Yes, they would. But an FHA, some of those government-type programs, they're going to be more stringent. Is that the correct? Is that the correct word? Yeah. Are you sure? Particular. For do whatever. They're going to examine the house more than a conventional. Yeah. A VA product. definitely. A VA they're going definitely to, will. Yeah. They're going to go around and they're going to look at things and they're going to say, "Hey, dude, you need to fix these windows. You got, yeah. you got problems." So sometimes a, a a government loan may come back with conditions that say, "You got to fix some stuff, homeboy." And sometimes if you do, if they know you have an inspection because they see the contract, they'll ask to see the inspection on the government loans. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would recommend is how to stack your offer so no one can say no to it is I would put up non-refundable earnest money. Ooh. Whoa, that's scary right there, cousin. <laughs> that's extremely terrifying, but most people do not know this. Whenever you build a custom home in Murfreesboro, in most of our subdivisions, if you look at those builder contracts, it says blank, non-refundable, earnest money. Yes. Most of them are non-refundable, earnest money. Hey, so, I, I have a buddy of mine in real estate that's very aggressive, and I don't know that he does, he does some non-refundable, but he'll do five and six and seven thousand dollars earnest money. And do it because a big chunk of earnest money goes a long way with a listing agent. Instead of putting up a thousand bucks, if you're bringing in a five thousand dollar earnest check, it really shows that they're very, very serious. Especially if it's no inspection, you know what I mean? Because that means you could lose that money if you don't go along with the deal. It's kind of like buying an engagement ring. That's what that's kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Hey, we're getting married. So the more certainty you can give the seller, the more likely you are yep. to get the deal. Now, some sellers are only going to think about money. I want to get the most possible money, but they get tricked. I mean, a lot of sellers end up getting tricked because they, they look at, hey, this is what we're going to make. Yep. There's a lot of ways to trick people. We've been tricked having my cousin Charlie. We have. Me and cousin Charlie got tricked, and it's taught me a lesson. It taught me to, whenever you've got all these contingencies in there, as a seller, you don't know how much money you're going to actually get until all of the contingencies have been met. Right. Home inspection, appraisals. Yep. You don't know what you're going to get until the home inspection and the appraisal's done. So initially, I'd say, Cousin Charlie, I'm going to pay you $200,000 for this house, but I'm going to do a home inspection. We've got to have an appraisal done. The appraisal's done. We pass that home inspection. Hey, I need to renegotiate with you, buddy. Yep. Ooh, I mean, I'm going to need $5,000 for me to close on this home. See, a lot of people don't understand when they're selling a home, the repairs that they want done, they look at them and there could be 
a hundred repairs to be done. And the buyer's agent is trying to say, well, let's just pick a few. And then the sellers, I can do this, or there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And they think that's the only thing actually wrong with the house. But man, we could find a couple hundred things wrong with every house out there. Well, you know what, after you take the offer, the seller loses some of the leverage. Yeah. Would you would you agree with that? If because you have contingencies, absolutely. When you have the contingencies, you're giving the leverage actually to the buyer. Yes. Because they do that home inspection and say they find three things. Yeah. They've got the option to walk away. So what I did, I took a six week acting class and I'll just get teared up when they did. call me back. Are and we if offline? you cry, are we offline? Oh. But I don't know if I'm still going to cry. We'll keep so. going. Keep going, weatherman. Man, I'll just tear up to the agent and give an old sob story. A lot of times that works. We'll keep going. Maybe we're on. Nah, we're not on. We're, we're not on. We're lost in translation. Dang, man. I'm still showing this world. Can about. you see me? Can you, you see us? I got you on mine. Well, we know though. It might just be our sprint network. All right. Well, keep going. Oh, we're still going. Keep going. The Verizon. (laughs) Weatherman, you can cry to the Verizon people. Yeah, cry to the Verizon people. But actually, the the communication between the agent and the listing agent are so crucial in these deals. Over communication. What is your What does your folks need? What can we do to make this offer better? Do they need an extra day after closing? Hey, we got a truck we'll let them use. What can we do to sweeten the pot to make it more desirable? Did I steal an answer from you? you you're on number seven, yes. You, you didn't okay. steal that. How did this have anything to do with you crying? Well, I didn't want to cry on live camera. I had to change Boy. the subject. I, I can do it just like that. But Cousin Charlie was on to something. Sellers, even in this, in this uh, seller's market, whenever they take an offer that has multiple contingencies in it, they are no longer in control. Right. They lose their leverage as soon as they take a contingency right. because there's so many, I'll call them checks in the yes. contract yeah. where you can back out. Well, hey, at, at any point, if it's not going the way I like, hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. Financial contingency, I can walk away. Home well, inspection, I can walk yeah. away. And then you know what? That sends the buyers back to starting all over again. Well, let me tell you a story about me, about a man named me. I was uh, representing a buddy of mine. We were selling his house, and he was buying a house, and this was years ago. Well, he went ahead and put a contract, and he was moving forward. He was buying that other home. He committed to it. He actually went ahead and closed on it. He could do that. Ooh. And uh, the, the buyers backed out of it, <laughs> out of the sale of his house, because of... Uh, Whenever they took the pictures off the wall, what does it leave behind the oh, holes in the wall? They backed out over that. So my, my point is this. These home inspection backout clauses are so vague. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's got to be a specific amount of damage. It's at their, what is it, Lisa? It's at their discretion. They've got to be okay with the results. They can back out of your house. They don't have to have... Right here, you go to Craig Foundation. They can say this window won't open. I don't want they really. They just don't want to buy the house anymore. Right. And a lot of times, when our contingencies come into play on the two hundred thousand dollar houses, is when they're overpriced. Right. Yeah. You won't you won't deal with contingencies because if the house is overpriced, usually you take these contingencies because you didn't get offers yep. and it's been on the market for a little. You while. ain't attractive enough to the market, so right. you end up taking bad offers. Number six, another way. To help stack your deals, have the lender call. When the lender calls the listing agent, more certainty is put into the offer. Do you agree, Cousin Charlie? I agree. Lisa, the other friend in the back. To when they say, hey, I I guarantee you this loan will close. You can count on me to make this close and close on time. I've I've had a few lenders call me and say, these people are gold. Yep. These people are great. Yep. I know these people, and they, uh, this will be no problem. So now, now it's it makes it even harder to turn their offer down. Are you back? I just went on my own network. It's our Wi-Fi. Our office is out.
man, you were a genius. Adam Hall is on here. Adam Tommy Hall, Santel. Watch Tommy Santel. Hey, me and him are best friends too now. Did you know that? I don't know how you're going to keep it, get all these best friends. I'm just going to get some of them out there to get mad at you. I've already got Nagy. Crumbs. You're going to get my hey, crumbs. Nagy's my crumb friend now. Okay, here is one, the last one I'm going to say. And this is where I believe all the difference in the world is made in sales of real estate. Number seven, your agent must sell certainty. You keep certainty. hearing me say that big word, Cousin Charlie, certainty. In negotiations, in sales, in debates, whoever is the most certain usually wins. Right. So whoever can, so if a buyer's agent calls me up and um, I'm going to usually ask some questions. I'm not going to be rude, but I'm going to want to know who's, well, hey, who's doing their loan? And if they say, well, it's uh, such and such, I don't know. Uh, they give me these vague answers. Now I believe that they're, 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 there's things they don't know. Yep. Well, what kind of, let's just say if they passed, well, it's being done by First Community. Well, who specifically at First Community is doing it? Then they say, next check. Then I'm going to say this. What kind of loan are they doing? Ooh. And if they're like, I don't know. See, I'm, I'm trying to find any reason to find a little weakness. If they go through all this stuff, I know I've got a solid person on the other end. I know, hey, this is somebody that we can work with. Yeah. So whenever Weatherman, look at Weatherman had a deal where he got to buy something before it went on the market, the deal fell apart. And guess what? And he had to tell that guy it fell apart on Monday. We we bought it on Saturday, but it fell apart on Monday. Monday. And then and we bought it again. Then he bought it again with somebody else. So there's a lot of doubt happens. A lot of like there's certain agents that might bring you a deal that you've dealt with in the past. That I don't know if I can get away with saying this without yeah. Candy calling me or somebody, but you lose faith in people. Yeah, and there are certain agents you like when it comes across like absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that. One. Yeah, but there's certain agents because you dealt with them in the past, they didn't call you back in time. Yeah, they wouldn't call you back. Is that illegal, Lisa? Is it really? I'm not naming anybody's name, <laughs> but I'm just saying <laughs> that from the past, they've made me question. They've made me question if I if I want to put myself because my obligation ain't to me, it's to the seller. Danny Ward, wow, local lenders should call the LA. Mr. Agent. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you can't use that against us, Danny, though. You can use it against anybody else. No, I want you to call me because I'm on call. No, I'm talking about if we're competing against the house. Oh. We don't want to use our trick still against us. Stuff. <laughs> Danny, share us out. We're talking but, about hey, I can I can tell you this. One of the things that, that great agents do, and, and there's a lot of great agents around the county, is they tell their clients the truth. And what I mean by the truth is you're in a, one of the most aggressive markets we've ever seen in Rutherford County, and chances are this is, in my opinion, this is what it's going to take to win this house. I would never pressure you or push you to make that decision, but I am telling you the truth. If you don't do something like this with 15 offers on the table, you're not going to win this house. And, and most agents are kind of go with what the client tells them, which is fine, but you need to be truthful and upfront because what happens is you'll end up losing that person because they're going to meet somebody that starts telling those things, and after they lose one or two or three houses, they'll do whatever. They're getting tired of losing houses at that point. Let's go back and make sure we put that disclaimer. If this is really, 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 really the house that you want. Really, really, if really. this is just a house that you're like, ah, I would, I would, I would have a completely different strategy. Sure. But, but I've seen people get heartbroken in this, where they couldn't get a house, and the reason why they couldn't get a house is their agent didn't tell them exactly what it took to get the house. Who you point out? Corey Jacobs, and I'm looking sharp. It's complimentary. What about me, Corey Jacobs? We're twin brothers. Why aren't you saying that about me? But I feel like a lot of times agents, what they do is they give uncertainty to their client and not tell them. There's no room to negotiate here. Yep. For you to get this house before it comes on the market, or if you get the opportunity to get this house, here's what you need to do. Yep. Can you live with doing this? Are you going to be okay with buying a house with no appraisal, no inspections, hard earnest money? That means you can't get it back if mm. you don't close, weatherman. That's a tough one. 
Well, those things are tough. Yeah. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to help them to get a house. But you've got to ask them, are you okay if this is what you have to do? And they may say, no, 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 I'm not okay dealing with that. But right. what we have found is after three or four misses yeah. of houses, they they start to loosen up. And I do not believe we are always going to be in this type of a real estate environment. It's going to swing back to where it'll be easier. But right now, if you're in the market to buy a house and you really, really, really want to buy one, it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be fun. And you're probably going to spend more money than you want. Sure. But if you wait, your interest rates are going to go up. They're going to keep going up. That's right. The, the housing market is, is very, very tough. Everything that comes out of that price point is usually gone the first day it comes out. If not, it never hits the market. There are so many houses now that are selling before they ever hit the market yeah. because people are just making great offers that you can't turn down. It's not the fact, believe me, the reason we do come in soon signs is because as real estate agents, we want the phone to rings and we want phone calls. So, but we have a, a fiduciary duty to our clients. Big word. It is big word. I spit it. I flow very well with it. If somebody no comes pauses. along and makes a great offer, we have to show them that offer. And if they decide to accept it, then house is off the market. It's not like that's our goal, but we have a job to do. We re the coming soon is strictly for leads and to make the phone ring and to get attention to that house. You know, and most of the time in this market, people are trying to get in early. They make just crazy offers that you can't turn down and and I wouldn't turn it down either if it was me. Hey, uh, a guy I really respect is on here. Mr. Memphis, John Giovanetti, tell the truth and like you guys, the best professional agents do their homework and know the market. Amazed by the number of agents that bring me offers that have never sold new construction and haven't done their homework. See, a lot of times great buyers, great consumers have someone representing them that makes the deal uncertain for the builder and right. for the the other agent. And I'm not I'm, I don't know any bad. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to prison him, Lisa. I'm not, we're not going to real estate prison. Yeah. But it's a misdemeanor. But the way your offer is presented matters. Absolutely. I mean, it really matters whenever we're talking to somebody and. They are fumbling through, and they can't ask. To, they can't answer the direct questions that we're asking them. They're 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 vague. Mm -hmm. You got to understand. It's like going over to Chick Fil A right now for a lot of these sellers. If you don't want the house, if you if you're fifteenth in line and you decide you don't want to eat Chick Fil A and pull off, there's going to be other people that are going to pull up there. Mm -hmm. I and tell you, somebody, you and you know. Them. Who is? And, and I truly have the, name, yeah, I'd say this, it's a lot of respect for this guy. And his name is Dan Alcorn. He will hand deliver Ooh, the offer. Cool. But you know, it's how impressive is that to come over, shake your hand, give you the offer, and hand deliver it to we you. We are to tag Dan Alcorn to give him up. Because he's, he's a, he's a gentleman he's that's been in this man. He's a true gentleman of the business. Yes, he is. Very, very and, good. And what he's doing is he's bringing more assurance that, hey, you got me. I'm going to get this deal yep, done. exactly right. You, you trust him more. Yep, absolutely. You know, what? how do you feel when you get offers and people have never even seen the house? <laughs> that happens. Yeah. That happens. Do you have anything, Kathleen, we need to add? No, it's so valuable today. Are you just saying that to make me feel good? I gotta go to karate here in a second. Here in a second, I gotta I gotta take Nick's testing for his next belt. Oh, he's gonna be a black belt. He's going straight from white to black belt. That a boy. Is Nick. that common? He's a seven? quick. He's quick. That's how good Bill Taylor is, though. <laughs> he can get you from a white to a black in just a few weeks. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Please share the stream. We've only had four shares. There's going to be four people. And one what of four happens people. if you share? If you share the stream, Chris Clark, Cousin Charlie, Kathleen, and the weatherman, there's only four options right now. I want you to go in here and share that stream. Share it, Corey Jack. The winner will get Alley on Main gift card. Mm. Cousin Charlie, is there anything we have not said that you think we should? I believe we covered it all. Is there anything, Kathleen, you feel like we have to cover? Again tomorrow on the morning. I tell you what, I, 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 I do think we ought to cover something, guys. If you're out there looking in this price range, it's very stressful. 
be patient. If, it, if the house is meant to be and God wants you to have that house, you will find the perfect house. So don't let the first one go if you miss out. Hey, life camera action. But, but be patient because it is very, very tough right now. Hey, the old girl just shut us down. Hey, are we still going? Hey, just shut us down. Hey, just a little cousin cute. Charlie, you shared it again? I did. That hey, disqualifies you. Hey. So, hey, I'm going to say this. I do, do want to say this. Here is something I really, really believe in when you're buying a home. I think it's crucial to interview an agent that's going to represent you. Yeah. It is crucial to sit and talk with somebody and say, hey, I, I like you or I don't like you. And you may have to talk to you may have to talk to ten agents because yeah. we believe when you know like and trust somebody, you're gonna make a much better decision. Too often seventy percent of the people deal with the first person they talk to when they're ready to buy a house. Right. Representation when you buy a house is free. It's free. Yeah. I mean if I was buying a house outside of this company, I'd be calling you, Bud George. I'd be calling, I'd be calling, uh... Did he really just say that, Charlie? Outside, 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 outside of this company. Outside of this company, I would be calling I'd be saying, hey, bud, I want some of your time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be calling you up. Hey, George Weeks. Yeah. Hey, George Weeks. I'd be calling you, bud. I want some of your time. I'd be calling you, George Weeks. I'd be calling these people and saying, hey... Corey Jacobs, yeah. Corey Jacobs, you, you got a good chance. But here's what might happen whenever you deal. This is what could happen when you deal with a Bud or a George. You could walk in and catch them on a bad day when they're so stressed. Maybe they're having a bad day and you don't connect the same. So I believe in chemistry. I believe in you really, really trust in that person. Cousin, hey, I got one more thing from John Giovanetti. Hey, guys. My good friends are opening a Hernandez Mexican Deli on the square next week. All right. So this is coming, opening a Hernandez Mexican Deli. What do you think? What is that, John? Is that like Mexican food? Is it authentic Mexican food? Is it tacos? I've never heard of a Mexican deli. You know, we like tacos. Hey, I want to give a shout out to my good friend Amanda Farr. Who recently just won, if I understand correctly, the uh, Jack Daniels Marathon? She won for her class. Her Kathleen class. won that. You ran the Jack Daniels? Belinda, what's up, girl? <laughs> we good. You're throwing in her class. Shout out to the people here. <laughs> hey, I'm going to say Kathleen would have beat her. Kathleen you think she would have beat her? Kathleen will be doing the Warrior Dash yeah. this Saturday. Well, uh, congrats, Amanda Farr, for winning. How far was that? It was Oak Barrel. 26.2 miles. Way to go, girl. No, she did a full. Cousin Charlie, for some reason. I believe he's a one up and For some reason, I, I'm, I'm challenging your certain, <laughs> certainty. Maybe it was a half, but she won it for her. Well, congratulations, no matter what. Hey, I, I can run two to three miles. I can drive two to three. There you go. Cousin Charlie, shut us down. Thank you, everybody. Thank Please you. share the stream.